Please welcome Developer Advocate from Google, Tim Bray. Hello, Tokyo. My name is Tim Bray. I'm a developer advocate at Google, specializing in Android. And I'm happy to be here today. I'm three times happy. First, this is my first Google Developer Day, so that's a good thing. Secondly, I'm talking about Android. I'm always happy to be talking about Android. I'm a passionate fan of Android. It's what I do for a living. Third, I'm happy to be in Tokyo. I've been coming to Tokyo for 20 years now, and uh, every time I go home, I start to think, now, how will I come back next time? What's my plan for returning? So I'm really happy to be here. So today I want to address the question, why? And in particular, why Android? But first, I think we should back up and start with the larger question of why mobile? Google is passionate about mobile. We think mobile technology is incredibly important, and we are working incredibly hard on it, and we would think, and we think that you should too. We would like to convince you to dedicate your energies to mobile technology. So let's do some numbers. Here we have the number of people in the world. The number of mobile devices in the world is approaching equality with the number of people in the world. More than half of all humans now use a mobile device. Many more than use a PC. This year, for the first time, more people have the opportunity to use the net via their phone than via their PC. And it's not just phones. In fact, the mobile business is clearly the largest high technology business. It makes almost every other business seem small. It is the place where we have the most opportunities to grow and to improve people's lives, and I would like to encourage you, the developers, to become committed to mobile. Let's look at some history. For many people, America Online, AOL, was the first experience of being on the net. This is a graph showing 20 quarters, or five years of history of growth, and AOL did very well. In five years, they got to almost 20 million users. Here in Japan, for many people, Docomo iMode was a very important step in the path to being online. It grew twice as fast as AOL. It reached over 40 million users in five years. And for the mainstream internet, of course, Netscape, was fantastically important. It was, the, all of a sudden, the internet was on everybody's desk. Its user base peaked at 50 million users in less than five years. But you know what? These numbers are small numbers. Apple's iPhone and iOS systems in only four and a half years have gotten to over 200 million users. This is real growth. Now, the history of Android is quite short. See the little green stripe there? But if this is an indication, we can expect that the growth of Android will set a new trend of fa fantastic growth. This business is huge, and it's growing fast. It seems to us that for a software developer, the mobile platform is much more interesting and everything else. So we've been talking about growth. Let's talk about the growth of Android. What we measure is the number of new devices that we've never seen before calling into a Google server for the first time. We call this activations. Earlier this year, we were very happy to announce that we were seeing 60,000 activations a day. In May, at Google I.O., that number was up to 100,000. And just then, some interesting new phones were released, and then it went up to 160,000 in only one month. These days, we are seeing about 200,000 new devices per day. If you multiply that by the number of days in a year, it's obvious that the Android user marketplace 
is vast. It's immensely huge. Not only is the number of phones growing, but the number of applications is growing as well. This year, from 20,000 in February to 50,000 in May to 70,000 in July to 80,000 today. Who built these apps? You built those apps. So, thank you. You're great. Please build more. <laughs> Among the other things that are growing is the number of different Android devices and phones. Uh, this is a, a little movie I took back at Google I.O. In, uh, in June, just walking by this very long display case showing all the different Android devices that were available. Everybody who came to the show had to go and walk by this and take this. It was very popular, and it, it was a nice little display. Of course, that was May, and this is September, and there are many more devices available now. There, you can see the numbers there, over 90 different Android devices. Now, the uh, one on the left of the slide, with the hand holding it up, is the Samsung Galaxy Tab. It's the device I carry around these days. It's very new. It's an outstanding device. Samsung have set a very high standard for everyone else to compete with. But you know what? I'm sure that by this time next year, this device will seem very ordinary, very boring. In this business, we have new magic coming every month. Now, there are many, many different app and kinds of Android applications, but one kind of Android application is special, games. One of the reasons Android is growing is because it's fun. Also, as Android devices grow larger and larger, they become even more interesting and fun with games. So I'm going to ask uh, Chris Pruitt, one of our Android uh, advocates here in Tokyo, to come up and show you the Galaxy Tab running Spectral Souls, a popular game that was developed here in Japan by Hyper DevBox. Chris. こんにちは。グーグルのプレートと申しますよろしくお願いします。こう見えるですかね。え、これはですね、え、制作ですので、サムサンガのタブっていう端末を使いたいと思うんですけど、日本のえ、開発者が作ってますえ、スペクトラル
very hard on Android Market. And this is a little bit of news, but there is a lot more news coming. Please stand by. I think you will be seeing some very interesting announcements about uh, improving and expanding uh, Android Market. Now let's talk about the Android software itself. Um, one of the most important re uh, changes in Android 2.2 was that most of the Google apps are separated from the operating system so that they can be updated and released in Android Market. For example, last week we have a new release of the Gmail app that has many improvements. Because of this separation, we are going to be able to offer Android users an experience of continuous improvement. Another new feature is what we call cloud-to-device messaging. This allows you to send a small message from your server to a Google server, and the Google server will send a wake-up message to the phone very efficiently. This is the same mechanism that Gmail uses to discover that there is new mail to read. And it's now available to all developers for free. Using this technology, we built the Chrome to Phone plugin. There is also a version for Firefox. So you can, if you have in your Chrome browser a URL, you can send it to the phone. If you have a phone number, you can send it to the phone, and the phone will call it. If you have a map location, you can send it to the phone, and the phone will go to bring up the map. Very, very, very useful stuff. I think this feature will be very useful to a lot of developers. Another feature that is very popular, especially for people like me who travel a lot, is I stay in hotels, and I notice that in hotels, the price of the internet is very high, and the quality is very low. Um, but now, with an Android 2.2 headset, it has tethering and portable hotspot, and I will never pay hotel internet again, never. Um, perhaps less exciting, but also very important, is that we've added a large number of features decided, de designed to make enterprise users happy. For those of us who build Android apps for use in big companies, we have found that the IT staff at the company is frightened of us. Well, now that we have added some of these things, perhaps they will see us as friends, not as invaders. I'm also happy to say that we have some Android news that is very Japan-specific. Android is doing very well in Japan, and that makes us happy. Um, one interesting thing is that we have some new voice recognition technology coming specifically for Japan. I'd like to ask Oikawa-san to join me and show us a new Japanese voice input method, if the Wi-Fi works. Uh, we developed it in collaboration with Omron, and in a near future release of Android, it will be available for any developer to use in any a uh, application. Oikawa-san. はい。今、え、ティムレノ <笑>ああ、ディア。ノーワイファイ。いや。いや、ワイファイにちょっと。ああ、ディア。オッケー。イツアグレートデモフォンアトワークスアンド
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Too bad. So you should find Oekawa-san here at the conference, and, and he will show you. Yep. Anyhow, so thank you. <laughs> we have some uh, other Japanese Android news. Um, I'm happy to announce that Matoya has agreed to open source two new high-quality professional fonts for Android, Matoya El san and Matoya El Marberi-san. They will soon be available for any Android developer to use in their application for free. So on the top, you see the old Android font. On the bottom, you see the new Motoya fonts. And they have a much more truly Japanese style. Another nice thing about Japan that makes us happy is, of course, the Nihon Android no Kai. How many members are here today? Oh, I see a few hands. They have now have, in, in Japan, over 11,000 members, 11,600 members in only two years. This is a fantastic success. And one result is this. So Japan has received Android only recently. And the number of Android phones here in Japan is not so high. But still, we have already gone to the point where the Japanese are the fifth most largest users of Android apps in the whole world. Now, that's good, but what's even better is that Japanese developers are the second most productive developers in the whole world in terms of producing Android apps. So I would like to give you a round of applause. <laughs> you guys are great. So when I come back next year, you should be in first place, right? <laughs> so working on Android is one of the best jobs in the world. Android is huge. Android is growing fast. Android is doing well in Japan. Japanese developers are one of our biggest success stories. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>